All right, so once you get everything cleaned up, this is just a little dust shield gasket that I pulled off the other one that was still in good shape. It's a hardened plastic one, which I'm not super familiar with, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on just in, just in case. Um, normally I'm used to the little paper gaskets, but it's the same thickness and everything as the one that I put on the other side, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the axle shaft in. Now, the U-joints were real good shape on this, and so really, all I did was clean it up real good, and then I just sprayed a little bit of a Chevy orange on the U-joints, and there's no real purpose other than I love rock crawling and those orange CBT shafts that you can buy for your rig, I just think are the, you know, are just awesome. So I just went ahead and put them on there just because I like them a lot and uh, making sure that shaft is in there real nice. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the spindle back on, um, cause this goes on first. And you just kinda wanna get it set on there. And then you'll let the, uh, you'll let cinching this down do the work. And, and so when you bolt it down, it'll all tighten. Just make sure you get it on there good. And it's got a spot to sit. And then you go ahead and you put your dust shield on. Now, I did not take any liberties to clean too much of the inside of this. As you can see, just pulled like the dirt daubers and the nastiness off of there. But I cleaned up the backside just so I can check for leaks and watch it. Because if you get brake leaks, it obviously eats away at paint. And this is a nice, you know, gold engine paint. So it'll definitely show up. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this back on here. And you just got to kind of remember where your caliper was. My caliper was obviously right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the exact same way. And just kind of get it close. And then I'll start cinching this down. So... All right, so I went ahead and repacked the bearings and I did the old school set grease in your hand and just smash it in until it gets in there. Um, works really good, takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it um, just because I don't have my grease packing machine. Um, but now I'm just going to go ahead and start the first nut. Um, I put the dust shield on for the spring. Um, just a side note, you don't need to do that. It'll slide right over this nut. But I just did it because that's how I took it off. And it's always a good practice to take it off and put it back together the same way. That way you don't miss things or you wind up like Ikea and have extra parts that might not need to be there. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and zip this on, get it going. And then uh, once I get that done, then we'll go ahead and put the, the washer on. And then we'll put the second nut on and make sure we're nice and snug and where we need to be. And then I'll show you an upgrade I did for my hubs here. All right, so instead of putting the auto hubs back in, uh, this is a full-time four-wheel drive um, with a 203 transfer case. I'm gonna be putting the part-time so I can put manual locking hubs. And then over time, I will be putting a part-time kit in the 203. I like the low range of the 203, so I'm gonna try to keep it, but I'm not gonna do anything to it until I pull the tranny out to rebuild it and put a stage two kit in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this gets put together. It's actually really easy. You just need to make sure you put that spring back in. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff. And if you want me to post other things, I'll go ahead and do that as well.
Okay, now all you do is just put this thing on and you just bolt it in. It's got a nice little O-ring here that is replaceable. Um, I have a set of these on my Willys Jeep and I love it. Um, I like the way they look. They function really well. And so I plan on testing them out on these and see how they work. But I don't anticipate any kind of issues or setbacks. Um, this whole set, if I remember right, I'll put the price in the link in a link below. But the entire set, I don't believe, was very much money. I think it cost me just a little over a hundred bucks for this set. Um, it does come with a few spares of these, just in case they do come out. So that's kind of awesome. And uh, I haven't really had them come out, but it is nice to know you have backups just in case you don't do things right. And I kind of get them all started first, and then I tighten them all down. So hopefully, you know, you do it whatever way you want to do it. Um, I just like to get them all started, and then I start to cinch them down. And when I tighten it, I tighten it in a star sequence, just like a car, just like a tire, I mean, um, just because it, you know, makes the most sense to me to tighten it and then go to an opposing side and, and do that. So I'm gonna show you the side view of it cinching down so that you can see what I'm saying as far as tightening it at least in an opposing view. So some kind of a star or whatever you decide to do, it's very helpful. Okay, got it all on there. See how it's now free spinning. And again, when this vehicle's running with the 203 transfer case, it is full-time four-wheel drive. So I'll show you and we'll make sure everything works. I'll lock it in. Oh, that crispy noise. And now my drive shaft is engaged. So that's in good shape. Free wheel, put it back in free. And now I got spinning. So that's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and put the caliper back on, hook the brakes back up and then show you the finish. Okay, so here is my freshly brand new, old, better functioning caliper. I'm gonna go ahead and put the brake pads on it. I've already compressed it a little bit just to make sure I got enough room, but just gonna go ahead and slide it on up in here, put it on, and then I'll show you the really cool, get in there, baby. There we go. Cooperate. There we go. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, took these bolts. They're the hex size. Um, they're cleaner. They had less oxidization on them, and that was very appealing to me. So I mostly did it for that. But now what I'm going to do is just get everything in place where it needs to go and bolt it on up. Go ahead and tighten this up, put the brake on, and then I'll show you it all finished. Okay, and just re-showing you guys, um, on these calipers, because they came off of my parts truck and not on the Blazer, the Blazer had original threads this size, and I know I showed you this, but I just wanted to remind you, and it was way bigger in diameter, and so we turned down and re-threaded this to be 1.6 because it was a metric um, unit, 
And uh, I know everybody was trying to transition back in the day, but this vehicle had standard and metric all over, and it was so frustrating. Um, but anyways, so this now works perfectly. I'm going to put some new crush washers on it, bolt this back up, and I'm not going to replace my brake line just yet. I do have new brake lines, and obviously I have more crush washers, and I'm going to be replacing it when I change out the leaf springs and a few of the other things, because... I didn't want to get it all right because otherwise it'll just continue to sit and not be driven. I wanted it to get it running and driving so that I can drive it around and work out the kinks. And once I get that done, then I was going to put it up on the lift, change out the shocks. I have a two and a half inch lift kit with new leaf springs and everything. That's when I was going to change all that stuff out and I'll put new brakes on at that point. Just want to get it running because every once in a while, guys, you just need that motivation. You want to get in it, move it around. And that kind of gives you a little bit of fuel to move forward when you have time. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this up. And then the last step is actually just to bleed it, which I probably will not be doing today. But definitely will be doing it because, you know, brakes. Just to be on the safe side as well, I, with it being a hollow bolt, I always have fear. I've broken them off before. So I'm using my little baby quarter inch ratchet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cinch it down and then tighten it just enough that the crush washers do their job and kind of go by feel that way instead of just giving it some serious onion with with a three eighths drive or even a half inch ratchet. So I'm gonna play it safe and then I'll tighten it down, make sure it's cinched up real good. And then hopefully uh, I don't have any leaks. We'll see what happens. All right, there's a little bit better light on this side. So I just thought I'd show you the finished product on this unit. So again, painted the back side of this dust cover just to really to resist a little bit of mud, corrosion, oxidization and stuff, and just to check for leaks. Um, cleaned up this front side here, allowed it to be, you know, a little bit more dolled up for when I have my rims on. Put my manual locking hubs on, these G2 ones. They're really awesome. Um, as you tighten them down, they just get kind of flush with here and that O-ring seats. Made sure I got some new brake pads put on here with this reconditioned caliper. We remachined the bolts just because I didn't want to find a new caliper. And uh, I'm gonna allow nature to resurface these as I'm driving it, um, just because they were new before they sat and then they sat. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let what happens happens. And then I obviously did, which the lighting's not gonna be very good, but I went ahead and cleaned this up, put a little bit of a paint in on the outside and then just kind of dolled up those manual hubs so that I can have a little bit of cleanliness. And it looks kind of like those Yukon axles, those CV types that are orange. I just thought it was kind of cool. Anyways, hopefully this helps, guys. Really, the next step is putting the tires back on, bleeding the brakes, and then driving this unit. Look for that later on.